Infernal Shrines, a map that was introduced in the Eternal Conflict event and considered to be very well designed both aesthetically and mechanically. There's a lot of comeback potential here. Are you sure about that? This is a no-nonsense guide to Infernal Shrines. As you would normally, let's get into the draft. You should be thinking about a couple of things that are almost essential in Infernal Shrines, which is Shrine Control and Shrine Clear. To elaborate, you'll want to take heroes that exploit the Shrine minions or simply have strong AoE abilities to clear the minions faster. For example, this is why generally speaking, Gul'dan and Kel'thas are preferred here over Li Ming because her abilities can be blocked by the Shrine minions themselves. In terms of Shrine Control, Double Tank can be an effective way to zone enemies out of the Shrines too. This map forces a lot of teamfights, and so the draft should reflect this as well. Heroes more suited for split pushing can be used as well, but I'll talk about that later. Decent wave clear is essential here, as there will also be 4 man rotations. The solo laner on this map does not have to be exceptional, this is a dangerous map to push the solo lane as you can be easily punished for it. So as I've mentioned, the start of the match will often involve a 4 man rotation, starting from mid going to bot. The reason for this is that if you can clear the waves fast, then it gives you time to do other things. Merc camps, ganking solo lanes, interrupting rotations, watching no nonsense guides. These are just a number of things that wave clear allows you to do. The tank players in particular should attempt to interrupt rotations by positioning themselves like so. Often a small dismount against four members is enough. By slowing down the enemy, you can put them behind on the rotation. And once again, this gives you control of the map. If the enemy is doing this to you, then the best choice is to simply punish the tank player if they're trying to slow you down for too long. After 1 minute and 55 seconds, the shrine will appear. The location and the type is always random. Do note that the arcane punisher can be very deadly and defending against it is so much harder than the other two punishers. So how should you contest the shrines? Well, here's a number of things that you can do. On the first shrine, normally you'll be very close to level 4 when it appears. It's a good idea to try and get to this level before you fully commit to give you a significant advantage when contesting the shrine. If the shrine is on top or bot and it's still early game, you potentially can have one person soaking two lanes to give you good map pressure and an EXP lead. Later on in the game, if there's a shrine appearing and you are not on the same talent tier, then you should be aiming to siege the other lanes while the enemy takes the shrine. This at least gets you much closer to making that comeback. Depending on your comp and shrine location, you should aim to at least poke the enemy out of the shrine or attack from the sides where the backline is the weakest. The top shrine in particular is very dangerous. If you position yourself further north, more than you're supposed to, the only escape you'll have is through a choke point. The mid and bot shrines provide multiple locations which can potentially be used by the frontline or melee assassins to invade the enemy. Make sure not to have all members stacked up in the choke points around the shrines as you can very easily be punished before the Punisher is even released. Tanks in particular should understand whether your team has to engage or not. If you do not, you should be super aware of enemy positioning so that you can peel for your backline if they get past. Okay, so the shrine has been captured. Let's take it from both sides. If the shrine you have won is an early game shrine, so mostly any time before level 10, you should ideally send at least one person, sometimes two, to soak the lanes while the Punisher pushes and harasses the enemy team. The first Punisher in particular should realistically only get the front wall for your team. You could get more than that with heroes such as Sylvanas or simply getting a couple of kills. After level 10, assuming the enemy is defending a full S5, you should push S5 with the Punisher. If a Punisher is threatening a keep in the late game, you should absolutely have 5 members there. Not only do you potentially take down a keep, but it could be the point where you just flat out win the game. Depending on your comp, you have the option to dive in with the Punisher to potentially grab a quick kill or just completely zone out the enemy from defending effectively. If you don't have the abilities that can jump over, then make sure to break down the side walls quickly so you can invade into the fort when the Punisher jumps. Now let's turn the tables. Unfortunately, you lost the shrine, because you suck. But don't worry, there are methods into taking the Punisher down without too much risk. The first rule, which I will be raising my voice for, so that it reaches all the players in the world. If a Punisher hasn't jumped yet and you have your front wall, stand behind the gate so that the tank or the mobile hero can bait the jump over the wall. 
Now, I wanted to make a compilation of other people failing this, but I think it speaks for itself. Ideally, the person who baits the jump should have some way of either preventing a stun or some kind of mobility to dodge it. The Punisher should be pulled back so that it is in range of the fort and the cannon tower next to it. This way, the enemy team cannot reach your team as easily and your damage dealers can safely and quickly bring it down. If the Punisher is low, dead, or has just jumped, then be quick to punish overextending enemies who want to take down your forts and keeps. Sometimes you may not be in a position to counter engage or even defend effectively against the Punisher. It's absolutely okay to let the enemy have the keep as long as your team does not die. Deaths around your keeps will most of the time just lose you the game. Now the key word here is most of the time, not always. That's really annoying when it, like, we were winning most of it. It's just that we would have. Wait, are we. Come back? Come back? Arthur's OP? Psychic's OP? Big red button? <laughs> just, we got this, boys. Let's quickly talk about mercenary camps, specifically the shamans on the top lane. These camps have incredible pushing potential and ideally should be taken just before a shrine is about to appear. You can time this by knowing that shrines appear 2 minutes after a punisher dies. Defense against these camps should be swift so that you do not fall too behind on the shrine count. I would like to end the guide by stating a very important rule. If the enemy is very close to finishing the shrine and you are nowhere near the 40 minions required, and also assuming the enemy is not low enough to kill, then please do not stand around trying to contest a shrine that you cannot win. Cut your losses and play the map the way I've explained so that even if you lose an objective, you can still have a chance to win.